Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the blackbraziltoday.com uh, blog, where I discuss Brazil from the perspective of race. Now, today, I wanted to revisit an article I posted back in June of 2017. This article is, tit is entitled, Where Are the Afro-Brazilians in History? Books. 17 Black People That You Never Learned About in School. Now, obviously, um, I'm speaking more of in Bra the Brazilian school system because, um, you know, in the United States, uh, you're not going to even hear much about African-Americans in a uh, and like history books, much less about African descendants around the world. So this is an article that uh, is mainly focusing on uh, how history is taught in Brazilian schools. But um, it's something that uh, African-Americans can very much uh, relate to. I know that growing up in the school system in Detroit, if, um, if I didn't learn about Black history from you know, organizations or activists or just people I knew, uh, I would have just went through history believing like, you know, black people didn't exist in history, because if you were to judge by the content that you learn in the school system, that's that's the conclusion you would come to. So as it turns out, the situation is much worse in Brazil. Um, in all of the, you know, the 20, 21, 22 years that I've been a uh, Following the situation in Brazil, I find that the situation in terms of recognizing the contributions of uh, Brazilians of African descent is, is even worse than what you have in the United States. Now, of course, over the last few decades or so, uh, we, there's this uh, celebration, monthly celebration in the month of November, uh, the Mês do Consciência Negra, which means the, uh, the month of Black consciousness, which is something similar to Black History Month in, uh, in the month of February in the United States, where organizations, activists, and uh, leaders, they celebrate the contributions of, of Black Brazilians in history, and as well as uh, some of the contributions that Afro-Brazilians are making to society today. Uh, I'd have to say things have improved uh, vastly in just in the last couple of decades, where, you know, when I first started going to Brazil, it was just rare that you met a lot of Black Brazilians in the street who even knew their own history. But that's a story that I will be getting into uh, just in the course of making these videos. I'll discuss that more as we go on. But let's get into this piece right now. So again, where are the Afro-Brazilians in history books? 17 Black people that you never learned about in school. Again, this is revisiting a piece from June of 2017. So today's article is short right to the point and something that my research and experiences in Brazil demonstrate why such material is important. The first reason is something I've mentioned in a previous post. On my very first trip to Brazil, I went to Salvador Bahia. It's a city that's considered the country's center of African culture. Within a few days of my arrival, one of my friends who was acting as my guide in the city, along with a young man I had become acquainted with shortly thereafter, took me to this small restaurant in the city's historic Pelodinho district. In this small restaurant, I saw a photo of the great intellectual and anthropologist Lelia Gonzalez. As I stood in awe of the photo, my two companions wondered why was I looking at this photo? Because neither, neither of the two had any idea who this woman was. That was just very revealing to me. Um, uh, similar situations in the United States. Uh, some of our, you know, most widely known uh, leaders and uh, intellectuals, most people will know who they are. But in that first trip, you know, it was uh, it was very few people that I would run into that just had a, a basic understanding and knowledge of the contributions of Afro Brazilians in their own country. A second experience that has been fairly common over the years is the number of Afro-Brazilians that I meet who have never heard of Brazil's most important modern day black leader, the playwright, plastic artist, actor, director, poet, and politician Abagias do Nascimento. This was even more shocking to me considering that Africana, the encyclopedia of the African and African-American experience, edited by Henry Louis Gates and uh, Anthony Apaya, defined Nascimento 
as the most complete African intellectual of the 20th century. To be clear, within Afro-Brazilian activist circles, everyone knows the importance of this man, but among the general population, very few people are familiar with him. And just to uh, to make this point, uh, to drive this point even further home, uh, Nascimento was the first uh, Afro-Brazilian activist, uh, we could say civil rights leader, who I became familiar with. It was uh, because of two of his works that I found in English that let me on, led me on this journey to get to understand the history of Afro-Brazilians, because um, two of his books, those were two of the only books that I could really find uh, that was translated in English, because at the time that I got into Brazil, I was not uh, well versed in, in reading or speaking Portuguese. So um, just how the Africana Encyclopedia defines him, that's that that says a lot, considering all of the um, important leaders and intellectuals of African descent that we've come across uh, for several decades now. But um, a lot of us, particularly those li us living in the United States, have never heard of Nascimento. And unfortunately, uh, by the time I started visiting Brazil in the year 2000, most Afro-Brazilians had never heard of him either. Now, um, a third piece that demonstrates why today's material is so important goes back to November of 2007. That year, in celebration of the Month of Black Consciousness, the city of Sao Paulo, the Afro-Brazil Museum and other institutions sponsored a campaign in which enormous banners of important figures in Afro-Brazilian history were featured on buildings around the city's downtown. Some of the names of these figures were known by perhaps millions of people as only the names of streets, avenues, or in the case of poet, writer, and literary, cricket, literary critic Mario de Andrade, the name of a library. In some cases, People knew the names, but never knew these people were black. Now, another point to make behind that is that not only will these people not know who these people are in terms of, you know, the names of the streets of these avenues, but they won't know that they are black. And, and oftentimes, uh, a lot of these people are never imagined to be black because they're just, you know, I, I'll get into this later on that, you know, the point here is that. If a, person, if a person is important in Brazil, it's almost automatically assumed that that person has to be white. And as we'll see later on, and probably in, uh, in videos that I'll make in the future, um, in some ways, Brazil has taken, you know, many lengths to try to, try to uh, we'll say, hide the African ancestry of some of these people. Uh, Mar Mario de Andrade featured in this photo is a really good example of that. Most people will probably never know that he was black. There was a whole controversy that came out about that, you know, some years ago, and people were disputing a particular photo about this man. Anyway, um, as I'm saying, in the case of Andrade, that November, a certain photo of the musicologist became the center of controversy, as some people didn't believe that one specific photo was, in fact, Andrade. As the debate went on and on, the G1 News website tracked down members of Andrade's family to get their take on this controversy. The people interviewed by the news outlet considered themselves white and opining on this issue. They wondered why it even mattered why it was necessary that people know that Andrade was a black man. The comment was perfectly illustrated. Or it, it perfectly illustrated how and why the invisibility of Afro-Brazilians continues still to this day in so many areas of Brazilian society. But why? As we can see, this is a, this is a photo taken uh, uh, during the uh, month of Black consciousness in Sao Paulo in 2007. That's uh, actually the, uh, I, I can't remember if this guy was the mayor or the governor of Sao Paulo at the time, as you know, um, Sao Paulo is the largest city in the country, um, but it's also the name of a state. So you have Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, like you have New York, New York. So this particular year, as you can see, some of these banners hanging in the background, they were some of these banners were hung throughout the downtown region just to uh, let the general public know that some of these well-known names of people, these names you may have heard of, doesn't necessarily mean that everybody knew that they were black. So this was the... Uh, this was the objective of this particular campaign in 2007. Um, now, one of the reasons why 
we get this 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 hiding of the importance of black Brazilian uh, historical figures. Why does this happen? Well, one, Brazilians are taught that as we are, quote unquote, all equal. This is a famous uh, slogan that you hear a lot of Brazilians say talking about, you know, nós todos iguais, not nós todos somos iguais, they'll say. Whenever the, you know, the, the topic of race will come up, you just hear that. We are all equal. Race doesn't matter. Thus, Andrade is seen as simply a Brazilian rather than a black Brazilian. Two, for me as a Brazilian, if a Brazilian is rich, powerful, important, or influential, they cannot possibly be or be classified as black. Three, like so many other prominent Afro-Brazilians in history, the descendants of Andrade are or classify themselves as white. And as such, for many, Mario would also logically be white. Four, the photo controversy speaks to the Brazilian practice of lightening or Europeanizing the features in photos of famous persons of African descent. The Andrade incident reminds us again of Brazil's ongoing pursuit of whitening its present as well as important pieces of its past. Um, this is an important point because uh, throughout all the time that I follow, you know, how the image of black people is dealt with in Brazil, you'll see this thing of trying to depict historical figures as being white, whether they retouch photos. I've seen uh, examples where they'll give a, a painting of someone who was Afri of African descent and they'll like put like uh, reddish cheek colors to, to bring out or suggest the idea that these people were pure, purely European. Um, this is this is something that I, I, I you know I've I've seen this throughout the, the period that I've been studying Brazil. And it's like you know why do it, what makes it easier to do is that often a lot of these uh, important persons of African descent, many of them will be will have a fair complexion. So it's 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 not even difficult that they try to pull it pull this away, um, try to get away with present, presenting or depicting these people as white. Um, so this is actually an addendum to an original post. Um, I had to update this post on June 22nd, 2017. Um, and interestingly, the original post above was published in the early hours of June 21st. Coincidentally, or perhaps not, the post on the invisibility of important Afro-Brazilian historical figures in the education system fell precisely on the birthday of the great writer Machado de Assis. This is significant for a number of reasons. One, Assis is considered Brazil's greatest writer. Two, for many, Assis was never thought of as being Black, although the leaders of the Afro-Brazilian community have always considered him to be Black, or at the least, mulatto. Three, Brazil has long attempted to whitewash the image of Assis as well as other Brazilians of African descent. An example of this was a controversial television uh, television commercial recent released in September 2011 in which the writer was portrayed by a white actor. Soon after an uproar in the black community, the commercial was quickly redone and featured a black actor portraying Assis. In celebration of what would have been the, the writer's 178th birthday, on the morning of June 21st, Google's Doodle Art Department that recognizes important dates, anniversaries, and birthdays on the search engine's initial page featured images of Assis that would appear for anyone in Brazil who opened the popular search engine on Wednesday the 21st. Perhaps recognizing the past controversy over depictions of the writer, Assis was portrayed with a very brown complexion in the images. These are some of the images that, uh, that appeared on Google's front page in Brazil on uh, June 21st, 2017. So anyway, um, continue with this article, 17 Black People from History You Have Not Seen at School. At school, probably, you have not heard of the male and female warriors or quilombola leaders who have drawn the history of Brazil. Now, the word quilombola uh, refers to people who lived in these runaway slave communities known as quilombos in Brazil. Um, in the United States, we call these uh, societies where slaves would escape enslavement and form their own communities. We knew them as uh, maroon societies. 
Um, contrary to the emphasis, emphasis on the traje- trajectory of Brazil's emperors, Dom Pedro I and Dom Pedro II, for example, little is studied within the classroom of the black influence of Brazil beyond slavery. Thinking about this, the free educational platform Quizlet invited Stephanie Hibedo, an architect student from Puki, which is a, a university in Brazil, uh, one of the campuses located in the city of Campinas, uh, which is located in the state of Sao Paulo. Um, Hibedo is a, a black feminist activist, and she, they came up with the idea of compiling a list of 17 important people from Brazil's black culture. On the interactive site, you had the opportunity to learn about each of them dynamically. Quem é quem na história negra do Brasil, meaning who is who in the black history of Brazil, leads you to discover how much you know about black Brazilians' personalities. Um, on this site, it, it allowed you to access the platform, you know, click on various contents, and it, it brings, it brought uh, several milestones in black Brazilian history. So um, in, my, in this article below, we see some of the names that were assembled for this website. Um, the aforementioned Abagias do Nascimento. He was a poet, actor, writer, playwright, plastic artist, university professor, politician, and activist of civil rights and human rights of Black populations. Now, as I, I mentioned previously, uh, Nascimento was perhaps the first, uh, we'll say, activist or intellectual that got me involved in learning about the situation of Afro Brazilians. Inter- interestingly, during uh, Brazil's dictatorship that lasted from 1964 to 1985, actually the second dictatorship of the 20th century, Nascimento, he had to flee the country. Um, at that time, Brazil was not open to discussing race relations or the possibility of the existence of racism. And um, Nascimento ended up becoming a, a professor, I believe, at a university of Buffalo in University of New York in Buffalo, I think it was. And it was intriguing because up until that point, he had never been invited to become a professor at a, a well-known Brazilian university. So once again, you know, a very important figure in black history, uh, not only in Brazil, but in the diaspora. But yet he's very, very little recognized in Brazil. Like in my experiences there, people were more likely to be familiar with uh, African-Americans such as uh, Malcolm X or Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks or someone of, of that stature rather than knowing their own, uh, their own Brazilian heroes. Here we have uh, Antoinette de Bajos, a pioneer in combating discrimination against blacks and women. She was the country's first black state deputy or congresswoman. She acted as a teacher, a journalist, and a writer. Andre Hibosis. He was a Brazilian engineer, inventor, and abolitionist. He spent his last six years working for the development of some African countries. José do Patrocinio. He was a pharmacist, a journalist, a writer, speaker, and political activist. He stood out as one of the most important figures of the abolitionist and Republican movements in the country. Catalina Maria de Jesus. Uh, for some people, she's just Catalina de Jesus. She's considered one of the first and most important Black women writers in Brazil. Um, and I'll say that over the last, let's say last decade or so, with more Afro-Brazilians uh, having access to uh, college education, uh, Catalina de Jesus has become an important literary figure, particularly for Black Brazilian women. They have celebrated her works. They have studied her works. You know, people have written doctoral theses on uh, the life of Carolina and her work. Um, when I first started getting 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 into Brazil, her uh, her book it was translated, I believe, as a child of the dark. Um, this was her first book, and it just detailed her growing up. She, I think she was actually from Minas Gerais, but she ended up moving to the city of Sao Paulo. Um, and this book just detailed her struggle as being a poor black woman growing up, you know, not necessarily growing up, but what it was like to be a poor black woman in Sao Paulo at that time. This book went on to be an international big seller. It was translated in various languages and it was just unheard of to see a, a black woman, particularly a dark skinned black woman find such, such success on a global scale. It was something that it was just unheard of in Brazil. Um, 
in the afore, another aforementioned example, I spoke on a Machado G. Assis. And it, it, Assis was easier for, we'll say, Brazilian elites to deal with because they tried to whiten his image. You know, there were people who would say, like, look, I don't consider Assis to be black at all. He, you know, he because of his literary skill and his writing skill, they just looked at him and says, well, no, this guy is white as the rest of us. When in actuality, he was he was clearly of African ancestry. But someone like Catalina Maria de Jesus, dark skinned woman, you can't do the same thing with her as they tried to get away with Machado Giacis. Um, when, when I get into future articles, we're going to see what the black population has done to try to bring forth the fact that Machado Giacis was actually a black man. Um, they've printed up T-shirts. They've had um, like online programs promoting the idea that uh, Machado Giacis was black and then wanting other Brazilians to recognize him as such. But that's something that I'll probably get into in a, a future uh, a future video. Um, Cruz e Souza, a Brazilian poet with the nickname of Cisne Negro, meaning black swan. He was one of the forerunners of symbolism in Brazil. Dandara, she was a black warrior from the colonial period of Brazil. She was the wife of Zumbi dos Palmares, and with him, she had three children. She committed suicide after being arrested so as not to return to slavery. Now, Zumbi dos Palmares is one of the most important figures in black Brazilian history. He was a 17th century um, quilombo leader. And in fact, uh, many organizations and movements in Brazil uh, that have to do with black identity and black history will take on the name Zumbi, Zumbi, they say. Um, matter of fact, the uh, Black Consciousness Day in Brazil no is November 20th, and that is the day that is recognized uh, when Zumbi dos Palmares was murdered uh, in 1695. Now, there's still some speculation over the way he was killed. Some people say he jumped to his death off of a cliff after being caught, captured. Some people say um, his head was chopped off and displayed as a symbol to say, for any of you who try to become a zombie, this is what's going to happen to you. Um, zombie, do, zombie dos Palmares is somebody, uh, a figure you're going to always hear about when you deal with Black Brazilian history. Again, uh, that's a figure I'll probably be getting into in, um, in future videos. It's intriguing because a couple of years ago, the show, what was it, program called uh, Dear White People? Uh, the lead character of that program, I believe she was a she was a, a radio host, and she actually did a segment on Zumbi dos Palmares. That's that's another story I'll talk about. Uh, it's featured on the blog. I'll get to that one day. But that was really intriguing. Um, Laudelina de Campos Melo. She was a she was a Brazilian champion of the rights of women and domestic servants. Uh, she was the founder of the first domestic workers union in Brazil. Lima Bajeto. He was a journalist and writer who published novels, satires, short stories, uh, chronicles, and a vast work in periodicals, mainly in illustrated popular magazines and anarchist peri periodicals of the early 20th century. Lelia Gonzalez, an important intellectual pol politician and professor, uh, and, and anthrop what did I say? Uh, intellectual politician, professor, and anthropologist. Um, um, Angela Davis has been spending a number of years uh, going back and forth in Brazil, participating in all types of seminars. She's given speeches and uh, she's become well acquainted with several of uh, the black women's movements in Brazil. And Angela Davis spoke on the importance of, uh, of Lelia Gonzalez. Uh, it, it was something to the degree where she says, look, I can learn a lot, you know, because when she comes to Brazil, people high her and, you know, hold her in high esteem, you know, because of her historical background and importance to African-Americans. And she in turn throws this back to them like, look, yeah, you guys look up to me, but I look to learn things from Layla Gonzalez. Uh, I think Layla Gonzalez died in 1994, if I'm not mistaken. She came up maybe a year short of reaching the age of 60. Um, Louisa Mahin, an ex-African slave, Settled in Brazil, she was the mother of abolitionist Luis Gama. This is Luis Gama. He was a lawyer, an orator, a journalist, and a Brazilian writer. Um, 
incredible history this guy um just to give you the idea of how important he was it was recently a film that was released about his life and that that's something that's just unheard of because when i first started getting into brazil you just didn't find films about uh, afro brazilian uh, historical figures this this was a big deal uh, i think it, i'm not don't quote me i can't remember it, it probably came out in about 2019, 20, maybe 21, not sure. But this was a big movie. Uh, as I said, you know, as many contributions that uh, Afro-Brazilians have made in history, they're just not recognized. They're, these are not people that everybody knows, even after going through high school and college, you know, throughout the country. Um, Luis Gama is particularly important because when I look at his story, he was somewhat of a mixture for me. A mixture between, say, uh, Frederick Douglass and uh, he, who else could I say, uh, Frederick Douglass? I had, I had already talked about this in one particular article. He was like a mixture between, say, Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman because at, at his time in the 19th century, he was not allowed to study at a prestigious Brazilian university specifically because he was black. But he gathered up all the materials and studied and learned how to be a lawyer. And even though he was not recognized as, the, as a lawyer at the time, you know, several, you know, a couple, you know, a hundred years later, uh, they gave him this title of lawyer, even though they wouldn't recognize him at the time, specifically because of racism. But he used his skills, uh, how he learned to be a lawyer to help free in the courts. It was somewhere like four or five hundred slaves. So um, Luis Gama, this is another guy that everybody should know about. Uh, Sueli Carnero, uh, she's a philosopher, a writer, and an anti-racism activist of Black Brazilian social movements. Sueli, Sueli Carnero is the founder and current director of Gelades Instituto de Mulher Negra, or the Black Women's Institute, and is considered one of the main authors of Black feminism in Brazil. Um, I think that... Um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Sueli is the leader of Gelades these days. Uh, she was one of the founders of this Black women's organization, I think, in 1988. But this is another woman whose history, trajectory, and importance in uh, Brazilian intellectual theories. Uh, this is someone who's highly esteemed by Black Brazilian women, particularly those who end up going uh, doing PhDs in, at, at the universe, in a university setting. Teresa G. Binguela. She was a Quilombo leader. Again, another Quilombo. This keeps coming up. Uh, she was a Quilombo leader who lived in the present state of Mato Grosso during the 18th century. She was the wife of Jose Piolio, who headed the Quilombo do Piolio. With the death of her husband, Teresa became the Haina do Quilombo, meaning the queen of the Quilombo. This is another woman who's a uh, whose uh, history has been celebrated uh, not only just in November, but uh, like the July 25th celebrations of, uh, you know, it's an international day for uh, Black, Latin American and Caribbean Black women. Um, this woman is, uh, she's, uh, she's taken her place in the historical importance of uh, Black Brazilian leaders. Here we have... Uh, Teodoro Sampaio, he was a Brazilian engineer, geographer, writer, and historian. Here we have Chia, meaning Aunt Siata. She was a Brazilian cook and a Mai de Santos, which means she was basically a, uh, a priestess of the Brazilian religion known as the Candomblé. It's, uh, uh, it's an extension of uh, the Yoruba religion. And you'll find throughout uh, South America and the Caribbean, you'll find a lot of countries have their own versions of this Yoruba. It takes on different names throughout the Americas, and Brazil is called the Candomblé. Uh, Chia Siata is considered by many as one of the influential figures for the development of the Samba in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, the Samba being uh, one of the most important uh, cultural inventions uh, in Brazil. It, it, is a, it is the national music, and in some ways it's comparable to the importance of the blues in the United States. Uh, so sambas, if you if you ever start studying about Brazil, you and you get into the Brazilian music, there's no way you can avoid uh, the samba. It's it's something that you'll still hear in like backyard parties, you know, clubs that you go to. You know, you'll be sitting there 
having a drink or having a snack or whatever. And then you'll just see a group of musicians get together and they're all just going to a well-known samba that everybody in the audience knows. So uh, samba is another category that I have to take on another time. But um, it's it's cultural and historical importance is definitively connected to uh, black Brazilians that it is it is a symbol of black Brazilian resistance. Now, as previously mentioned, uh, the wife, the husband of uh, Dandara, this is a statue of Zumbi dos Palmares, uh, or what it means is Zumbi of Palmares. And it says uh, the black leader of all the races. Now, this Quilombo where that Zumbi led, even though it was majority black, there were actually Quilombos, particularly Palmares, it had mixtures of different people. It had, you know, Indians, it had, run, you know, other, you know, white people who they all lived together in these quilombos. Uh, the one called Palmares was the largest one in the country. It's uh, It was located somewhere in the northeast between present day Alagoas and uh, Pernambuco, two northeastern states. And as I said before, um, Zumbi is somebody you're going to always hear this name when they talk about Black Brazilian history because of his importance. Uh, he represents the symbolic resistance of the Afro-Brazilian population. He was the last of the leaders of the Quilombo dos Palmares, the largest of the Quilombos of the colonial period. So this is just um, an introduction because obviously there are just numerous, numerous uh, Afro-Brazilian historical figures that, you know, people who I talk about on the blog, uh, even today there are still figures that are coming out uh, that should be recognized for their important contributions as Black Brazilians. Some of these people, I have uh, bigger articles on them throughout this blog, and they'll obviously one day I'll be making videos about them individually. So this just acts as a um, just like an introduction to some of the most important Afro-Brazilian history, historical figures that you're going to come across if you should ever dive into the history books of Brazil, because, again, um, these are people that you may not hear about, or uh, these are people that a lot of Black Brazilians are only recently getting to know because uh, the stories of these people have been purposely excluded from uh, the history books. So, you know, with that said, I'm going to end this video right here. Again, um, well, let me just say, if you got something out of this material, if you thought it was intriguing, if you learned something, do feel free to like this material, you know, give it a thumbs up. You know, it helps me out with uh, YouTube's algorithms. Be sure to share this material, you know, post your comments. What did you think? Um, definitely subscribe to the uh, to the YouTube channel for Black Brazil today. And if you want more about these articles, uh, if you want more about this video, some of the stuff that I talk about in this video, be sure to check out the Black Brazil Today blog. That's blackbrazildoday.com, where you find anywhere between 3,600 and 3,700 articles. This blog has been up since about November of 2011. So definitely check it out. And um, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.